Hello, I'm Louise Hay. Welcome to my Personal Power Through Imagery series of visualization. The Forgiveness Inner Child Meditations come from one of my workshops. To use the same meditation two or three times in a row is very helpful. And now, let's go within and prepare to meet your beautiful inner child. Take a nice deep breath and close your eyes. Take another deep breath and allow your body to completely relax. Let your attention move to your toes and allow them to go completely limp. Now relax your instep, your heels, and your ankles. Just let the whole foot become heavy. Allow this relaxation to move up your calves and into your knees. Continue to move this warmth and relaxation into your thighs, feeling them become heavier. Now let your hips and your buttocks melt. Your waistline releases. And you can feel the peacefulness move up into your chest, expanding through your collarbone and into the shoulders. Now allow your upper arms to let go. Your elbows relax. Your lower arms, wrists, and hands. And the last of the tension moves out through your fingertips. Let your neck relax, your jaw, your cheeks. All the muscles around your eyes, your forehead, and your scalp. Let go. Let go. Let go. Relax. Many of us have an inner child who is lost and lonely and feels so rejected. Perhaps the only contact we have had with our inner child for a long time is to scold it and criticize it. Then we wonder why we are unhappy. Let us do some work to connect with those neglected inner parts of ourselves. Go back with me in time. See yourself as a little child of five. Hold out your arms and say to this child, I am your future and I have come to love you. Embrace this child lovingly and then bring this child with you to present time. See the two of you standing in front of a mirror 
looking at each other lovingly. And as you stand there, you become aware that there are so many parts of you that are missing. So once again, let us go back in time to the very moment you were born. You had just come out of the birth canal. It may have been a difficult trip. You feel the cold air and the bright lights, and someone may have just smacked you. You have arrived. You are here to live a whole lifetime. Love that little tiny baby. Love that baby. Now move forward in time to the moment when you began to walk. You would stand up and fall down and stand up and fall down and stand up and fall down and then suddenly you were standing and you took a step and another step and you were walking and you were so proud of yourself. Love that little child. Love that child. Then move forward in time to your first day at school. You didn't want to leave your mother, and you knew you had to go, and you didn't want to leave your mother. And you went. You took your first steps over the threshold. You were scared, but you did it. You were doing the very best you could and love that child, love that child. Then remember your life around the age of 10 and all the stuff that was going on then. It may have been wonderful, it may have been difficult, and you were doing the very best you could to survive, and you made it. So love that child. Just love that child. Then go to the time you were just entering puberty and all that was going on. It was exciting and scary and maybe more than you could handle. But you got through it. You did the best you could and you made it. So love that teenager. Love that teenager. Go to the time of your first job and how exciting it was to earn money. You wanted so badly to make a good impression and there was so much to learn. And you did the best you could. And love that person. Just love that person. Remember the time you were first rejected in love and how much your heart hurt and you wanted to die and then you were afraid you wouldn't and you knew that no one would ever love you again. You were in such pain, and you did the best you could, and you made it. Love that person. Love that person. Then go to another milestone in your life. It may have been embarrassing, or painful, or wonderful. Whatever it was, you were doing the best you could at that time with the understanding 
knowledge and awareness that you had then. So love that person. Love that person. Now gather all the many parts of yourself and bring all of them forward in time to present time. See yourself standing in front of the mirror with all of yourselves and realize that you are looking at the richness and fullness of your life. Of course there were difficult times and painful times and embarrassing times and times of confusion and that's all right. It's part of life. Love all of yourself. Now all of you turn around and as you look ahead you see a person standing before you with arms outstretched, saying, I am your future, and I have come to love you. When it feels right, come back to the room. Life is an endless opportunity to love ourselves, past, present, and in the future, loving and accepting every part of ourselves is healing. How can we possibly be whole or healed if we are rejecting any parts of ourselves? Healing is to make ourselves whole again. Love yourself every part of yourself and be whole. All is well. And so it is. We hear over and over again how important it is to love ourselves. We are aware that love is the most powerful healing force there is. And yet, no matter how hard we try to love ourselves, many of us keep hitting a brick wall. Something is in the way. It seems impossible for us to break through. We begin to believe that we just can't love who we are, that there must be something wrong with us, or perhaps we are not worth loving. This frustration and anger at our own inability to do what we know is so important to us leads to depression. We feel hopeless. And yet there is an answer. There is something we can do to open the most stubborn doorway to love. We can forgive. Forgiveness opens the doorway to love so that love may flow most abundantly in our life. I have noticed that when the door to love seems to be stuck, it is usually because there is someone or something that we are unwilling to forgive. Yes, it may be true that we have had a very unpleasant experience in our past. That is unfortunate. However, it is not unforgivable. Forgiveness is a gift to ourselves, for it sets us free. When we refuse to forgive, we sit in a prison of self-righteous resentment and stay stuck in the past. This hurts only ourselves. The other person may not even know we are in pain. I know that you can heal your heart now and that you are worth loving. Here is something we can do to change things. Let's take a little journey 
to clean out the pockets of bitterness that may still reside in you. Close your eyes. And let's walk down into a valley. Going down is always symbolic of going into your subconscious mind to do clearing work. As you descend into this valley, you notice with delight how very beautiful it is. Lush and green. Flowers everywhere. Birds and butterflies. Trees and a gentle stream. Find a comfortable place to sit on the bank of this stream. Settle down and just relax. It is so peaceful and safe here. It's a wonderful place for letting go, for forgiving. Ask yourself, what is the hardest thing to forgive? Remember the pain that incident caused you. Where are you carrying it in your body? How long have you been carrying that pain? In this very safe place, allow yourself to take the pain out of your body and hold it in your hands. Look at it from every angle. How big is it? What color is it? Does it have a sound, a smell, a taste? Do you really want to keep it any longer? Are you willing to let it go now? Gently place it in the stream. Watch the current dissolve it and take it away. All that hurt and suffering is being dispersed, made harmless as it drifts away. Feel the water flowing against your hand, washing it clean. Notice how glad you are to have released that old junk. Now take another incident. Really relive it. Feel the pain and hurt. Take a breath and step back in your mind and look at the incident from the other person's point of view. Does it look the same from that angle? Now take another breath and look at the same situation from an observer's point of view. Someone who is watching both of you and is totally objective. 
Is that also another point of view? Every time you look at the experience from a different angle, you get a different reaction. Who is right and who is wrong? Is anyone really right or wrong? Now take that whole incident involving the other party, you, the incident, and the observer, and let them all gently submerge into the stream, dissolving and disappearing. Let it go. Let it go until it is gone from sight and from your emotional grasp. Give yourself a moment of peace on the bank of the river. Lay back against the grass and breathe. Who is the hardest person to forgive? And why? If you really wanted to forgive this person, you know you could. What is it you want to hold on to? Would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? Perhaps you have held this pain long enough and now it is safe enough for you to let it go. What would you be willing to give in return for releasing this negativity? Could you give understanding for abandonment? Could you now give compassion for the old abuse and betrayal? Could you give acceptance for rejection? Could you just forgive and let go? Are you willing to change your old beliefs of I am worth abusing to I am worth cherishing? How willing are you to give up these old ideas for a new freedom that forgiveness can bring you? Once again, just release all of this pain. Drop all of this bitterness into the river let the person go, release them, set them free. Say to them, I forgive you. I forgive you for not being the way I wanted you to be. I forgive you and I set you free. Let the whole experience go. Wash yourself free of every vestige of the past. See blocks and barriers drifting down the stream. Watch them go. They have no part of you anymore. You are cleansed and you are free. Now go through your mind and find any other places where unforgiveness resides. Take each incident or person 
and hold them in your hands and look at them and decide if you are willing to be totally free now. I forgive you and I set you free. I forgive you and I set myself free. Now place each one in the river and see them dissolve as they drift downstream. Let them go. Let it all go. Forgive and release the whole world. Now step into the stream yourself. Let yourself be totally immersed for an instant. Then stand up in the water and declare for yourself, I am forgiven. I am forgiven and I am free. Your mind, your heart, your whole body is being cleansed of all negative debris. The weight has been taken away. You can see it floating downstream, never to return. What a relief, what a joy. As you come back up the bank, notice how light and free you feel. The sunshine looks brighter and dries you instantly. The colors and the sounds are more vivid. The world is more beautiful and you know you are entitled to miracles. What miracle would you like now? See it clearly in your mind. Something wonderful you would like to have happen in your life. Know that it is possible. As you walk up out of the valley, having left the old patterns behind, Feel the space opening in your heart. Feel the love beginning to flow. There is nothing to stop it now. You feel so peaceful, so relaxed, so alive, so willing to love, so very free. You have forgiven, you have been forgiven. Life looks good and you know that all is well in your world. And so it is.